It's me, Phil Morse, in the studio with another Tuesday Tips live show. If you are joining us live, awesome. It's great to have you here. If you're watching the replay though, then this is a show. This lasts about half an hour. We cover the topic that is in the title, but we also cover what's going on here. We also shout out to our viewers on both YouTube and Facebook and over on the uh, Global DJ Network, which is our own group for DJs by DJs. And if you're not in the Global DJ Network, you ought to be. You can go there by going to our normal Facebook page at Digital DJ Tips, clicking message and sending us the word join. So go to our Facebook page, click message, send us the word join, we'll get you into the Global DJ Network. Over two and a half thousand members now, it's a completely pr uh, private, closed group uh, for anyone learning to DJ and it's awesome. So uh, this is broadcast there as well. Uh, and we're also, um, we're also going to, uh, yeah, just keep you up to date with what's going on at Digital DJ Tips. So the point I'm making is if you are watching this on the replay, especially if you're on YouTube, because I know how impatient you YouTubers get, this is not a, um, this is not a uh, five minute video with five quick tips in it. This is a show, it's a recording of a show. Uh, and so it's best off watched live. So if you are watching on YouTube or indeed on Facebook, hit the subscribe, hit the notify, uh, or in Facebook, hit the, uh, the like, button uh, to follow the page and then also click show this stuff first. I'm just going to turn down that computer which is beeping away telling me I've got lots of nice comments coming in from you guys and girls which is awesome. I just don't want to be hearing them uh, while we broadcast. There you go. There's proof if ever it was known uh, that we are actually live. Okay so that's my point. If you're watching this uh, as a show it's much more fun live so do follow us and then you can follow along live. Uh, and I have all the comments and all the reaction from you guys and girls out there uh, coming in to me live as well so I get to give lots and lots of shout outs to you. So just before we get started a few early shout outs. Hi to Marlon and Ali and Dominique and Nigel uh, and Yves and Antoine and, and uh, two more Michaels and uh, Michael McKenzie to Paul Rayner uh, to Dag in Germany and to D. Uh, lots and lots of on Facebook tuning in over on YouTube. Hi to Jason and DJ Dash, DJ Foxy T, the world of Rasmus, DJ, uh, uh, DJ Dash again, all very chatty there. Uh, Onion Soup, good to have you here, Onion Soup. So uh, lots and lots and lots of people tuning in. I actually wasn't here last week. Joey did a really good job for me. So thank you very much to Joey for doing that. And the reason I wasn't here is that I was in Amsterdam with Laidback Luke recording some uh, really exciting DJ training that is coming out later this year also recording a podcast episode and just basically hanging out with Luke for a whole week, which was a privilege, a lot of fun. And actually it's one of the reasons why I've got the subject I've got for you today to talk about the five tips to accelerating your DJing success because I've been surrounded by DJs, producers, agents, managers, tour managers, PAs, and all the other people who contribute to the success of big DJs and also just I've been immersed in the DJ mindset because I've been recording with a superstar DJ for the last week. So just reminded me of some of the things that are important when you wanna make it in this world. Not hacks, not stuff that just mean, hey, you know, I've managed to get myself a thousand followers on Facebook or I've done a little mix on YouTube with loads of hits I got off DJ City and loads of people are watching them or whatever. They're hacks. They're the kind of things that will get you a bit of recognition and scratch the itch of people are taking notice, it's awesome, but they won't get you success. What I want to talk to you today about is success. Some of the things that people like Luke and other DJs who've been in this for, for, for years and decades, even from before YouTube and Instagram and all that, the stuff they've been doing consistently that means they've got success. And if you want a career in this or you want a successful hobby or a part-time income, these are the kind of things you should be doing. Yes, you should be doing with other stuff as well. There's great things you can do on all the social platforms, but you know what? By the time I've given you these tips, you'll know what to post on social, which is one of the cool things. So whenever people say, how do I get a thousand people to follow me on Instagram? Or how do I get people to listen to my mix or watch my video or whatever? it's because you're going about it the wrong way and hopefully today I can help you with going about it the right way. So that is what the subject of today's Tuesday Tips Live is for. And by the way, if you just haven't got a clue who we are or what goes on, I'm Phil Morse. I'm the guy behind Digital DJ Tips, but also behind the book Rock the Dance Floor, which you might well have seen even if you haven't heard of Digital DJ Tips because it's one of the best sellers on DJing over on Amazon. Uh, if you want a copy of this, you can buy it on Amazon. You can also buy it in any good bookshop. You can get a Kindle version. You can get an audio book or you can get it directly from us. And the way to get it from us is to go to digitaldjtips.com slash join. That's it, go to digitaldjtips.com slash join. Become a member of our community uh, and we will give you a download of this 
absolutely free in order to thank you for just becoming a member of our community, which is also free. We'd love to have you in there. And while you are there, why don't you head over and join the Global DJ Network? Uh, so get it all done at once, become involved. It's worth being involved. We love helping DJs to become better DJs and producers to become better producers. So do these things uh, and join in. We'd love to have you there. Right, let's get started. I'll give you, give you some more shout outs uh, in a little bit, but I want to get stuck straight in. And normally one of you wonderful, wonderful people comments giving the, the timestamps of when I give the five tips out uh, to help people who do just want to browse. So if someone would like to do that, I'd absolutely totally appreciate it and we'll pin it to the top of the comments. Uh, but don't all be doing it because uh, I'll only pin one. Uh, probably a bad idea actually, <laughs> but anyway, um, it's always good to have those links. I just don't want everyone typing them instead of enjoying the broadcast. Right, let's get going. So these are five tips to accelerating your DJing in 2019. So tip number one is produce content. People forget that you've got to have stuff out there. You know, if you're a professional DJ, uh, you've got to have um, mixes and you've got to have productions out there. Otherwise, your agent has got nothing to refer to when they're getting you bookings uh, and so on. Your record label has got nothing to take its 20% of, etc., etc. But people forget that. People say, hey, I'm a DJ. Uh, and then they spend all the time on social trying to get people to follow them and they're not doing anything. You know, if you're a DJ, DJ. If you're a painter, paint. If you're a singer, sing. You've got to do stuff. So the thing here is that you've got to do it all the time. You can't just do a bit and then try and fall back on it. You can't make something and then sweat it. You've got to be doing it all the time. And so this means if you want to be a DJ producer, you've got to make a tune once a month. If you want to be a DJ producer, you've got to do a remix once a month or a re-edit. If you want to be a DJ, you want to be playing at least two gigs a week or two gigs a month or whatever it is that's important to you or putting a mixtape on Mixcloud or using Dubset to put a mixtape on Spotify or on Apple Music, which is now actually possible, people. So, you know, these are all the things that you need to have planned as part of who you are and what you do. You have to be producing content. It's so, so important. We have a rule here at Digital DJ Tips that we all have to make something every day. This counts as making something, by the way. Me chatting to you through these five tips I've prepared, it counts as making something. It's a creative output. It puts something into the world that can help people. And as a DJ, you've got to put stuff into the world. Otherwise, everything else falls down. So, you know, it's work. Yes, it is work. Sometimes you're not feeling creative. Turn up anyway and do the work. Because guess what? The DJs who do the work get the breaks. So don't forget in this world where we're distracted by all kinds of things, social media this and you know networking that and all that stuff, it's all important, but not if you're not making stuff. So find time to make stuff, that's the important thing. Uh, and put it in your calendar and make sure you do it consistently, even if you don't feel like turning up. So making stuff, making content, producing content is our first uh, five tips for accelerating your DJing. Slap on the hand, when did you last make a mixtape? When was it? Be honest. That's for you. Make them more often. You said you'd do one once a month. Do one once a month. Uh, when did you last make a tune? Is it when you said you would? Look, get them finished. The best thing about finishing something is you can start something else. So no excuses. Let's be making more stuff, people. It's the thing that separates dreamers from doers. Um, so let's look at a few of the things that you guys and girls have got to say before we move on to number two. If you have just joined us, five tips to accelerating your DJing success in 2019 is our Tuesday Tips Live today. Um, yeah, man, says Ali, I do need to make more live mixes. Um, so um, lots of you asking about Luke, not surprisingly, Joshua says, I saw laid back Luke's latest video and that he's doing some work with you. What do you all have going on? You're gonna have to wait and find out. It's very exciting though. Um, so, um, um, and uh, people are asking how to upload mixes to Facebook without being flagged. Actually, I just told you a way to get mixes out there without being flagged. Use a service called Dubset, D-U-B-S-E-T. Um, if you're a member of our Digital DJ Lab program, Joey has done an action plan in there showing you how to use that to get your stuff onto, onto Spotify and onto Apple Music and the other services like that. Uh, but basically, look it up, Google it, Dubset, D-U-B-S-E-T. They can help you get your mixes out there legally, although not onto um, not onto Facebook at this time. People are asking you, what is that DJ uh, setup you've got there? This DJ setup we've got here is the Denon DJ MC4000. Lovely little controller. A little bit old now, but uh, we've been doing some stuff on this today. So it's the Denon DJ MC4000. Uh, right, okay, very good points. Um, you can't slack or you'll become complacent and stagnant. I agree with you there, Ali. Um, D says, it's great to be back, but I lost my top fan badge. Oh, D, never mind. Well, you're still 
you're still topping our books. Um, so Dominique says, I just bought your complete DJ course and it's great. Uh, that's really good. Uh, so if you missed the complete DJ course, by the way, people, this is the complete DJ course. Um, and you can get it from the Digital DJ Tips uh, sites by joining up. We'll let you know when it's next available. Uh, and in fact, I think I showed you that instead of the, uh, the complete DJ, uh, instead of the other one I wanted to show you, but hey, these slides always confuse me. But anyway, um, there's another thing you can do if you're interested in our new course, just go sign up, be a member, and we will let you know when it comes back. Uh, and for those of you thinking, I'm sure you were selling that last week, we put it on our private release last week just to our members, uh, and uh, that's over now, but at the end of this month, it's gonna go public. Uh, so anyway, we're not here to talk about that, but just in case you wanted to know. Um, lots and lots of you asking uh, questions about, not surprisingly, the Luke course. James says, I'm so excited to see what you've been coming up with. Any idea of when that course will be coming out? Later this year, uh, James, we are, you know, it's a big thing that we're doing with, with uh, Luke, but we're working on it hard right now. Um, so lots of you just saying hello. Uh, I will go right back to the beginning of the comments and give a massive shout out to everyone at the end because I do want to move on with uh, what we've got for you today. Uh, I do realise that some of you are watching this when you shouldn't be uh, in your lunch breaks and so on. Um, but uh, uh, Michael says, I admit I have not made as much content as I planned. I will get my finger out. And Blake says, hi from Toronto. I definitely need to do more mixes uh, as well and improve my skills. Um, DJ Dash says, Phil, I feel less and less people listen to my mixes with today's short attention span. What I need to do instead is create promo videos of my gig to show to possible clients. DJ Dash, you've got a plan there, so go do that. Um, so, you know, one of the things I say about creating stuff is create stuff that's interesting, that interests you, that you think will interest other people. Uh, we're going to talk about that a bit more in a minute. Okay, let's move on to number two then. We're talking about five tips to accelerate your DJing success. And it's based upon uh, some of the inspiration I found when I was knocking around with Layback Luke and all his people in Amsterdam uh, in the past uh, week. So number two, meet other people. You are surrounded by amazing, incredible, inspirational people. You are, and especially if you're in the Global DJ Network, the Digital DJ Tips, uh, the Digital DJ Tips private group, uh, which I was telling you about online, but also offline. Wherever you live, there are people who are inspirational, who you could be hanging out with. There are producers, writers, designers, promoters, other DJs, and so on. Meet them. Don't make excuses. Get out there. Set yourself a target. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take one person for lunch a week. No one turns down a lunch invite. No one. Um, or if you just can't bring yourself to ask someone out for lunch, ask them out for a coffee. Um, people want to meet, people want to talk, it's in our genes. It's once we sat down with someone, all the nerves go, we chat, we learn, we can help each other, we network. This isn't about being using people, it's not about being sleazy, it's just about asking that person who interests you, who you thought about after you met them, um, to come and spend some more time with you. It's something that when you get into the habit of it, you'll miss it when you're not doing it. And just meeting the people around you with no other aim than that, it's such a healthy thing to do and so much will come of it. So, so much. So don't make excuses. Um, meet the people around you. Ask what they're up to. Ask how you can support them. If you meet someone who's a painter and they've got a gallery um, and they're, they're showing something, ask when you can go and support, go and, go and look at their work. Um, if you meet someone who is a graphic designer, ask if you can look at their showreel and see the stuff they've done. You never know. Your painter might end up doing the artwork for your next mix. The graphic designer might be help, might end up doing your website uh, and you might end up DJing for them in return. Hey, guess what? It didn't cost you anything. You'll never get any of this stuff if you don't get out there. Conquer those nerves and meet people. The difference between people who make it and the difference between and people who don't is the people who make it have got people around them. Not, oh yes, they've got paid people around them. They've got an agent and they've got a tour manager and they've got a manager and a PA and all that stuff. But they know people. One thing that Laidback Luke was saying was that ever since the very early days, he's been, he had a forum. He had a guest book on his website that turned into a forum. Uh, and he had all kinds of people, including people like Steve Angelo and, uh, and um, Avicii, who came into his forum as nobodies and he got to know them and they got to know each other. And guess what? They all rose together. If you don't meet people, you're never gonna do this on your own because no one did anything worthwhile on their own. So I can't impress on you enough the importance of meeting people. And as I say, not for any sleazy reasons or predetermined reasons, just because it's a good thing to do. So we're talking about five tips to accelerate your DJing success. They're not hacks, they're nothing out of the ordinary, they're just stuff that you need reminding of sometimes, and I'm doing it today. Number one, produce content. If you don't make stuff, you're dreaming, not doing. And number two, meet people. 
Uh, okay, so Party Anthem says, I just bought your book, Phil. It's great. Thank you, Party Anthems. Um, it's a good beginner book. We do enjoy uh, the, the help we give people with that book. Networking, says Chris. You got it. Um, iron sharpens iron. Uh, that is a great way of putting it. So thank you for that, Chris. Um, so, well, here goes my website. A good friend did it and no actual money was involved, but we traded other things, says Helder on Facebook. So there you go. And Helder uh, has got a website at DJ. Let me just take my glasses off to check it's right. DJ Limes, djlimes.com. Uh, and that's in our Facebook comments if you missed it. So, uh, so there you go. Uh, Keith says, hey, Phil, can you get me to meet Carl Cox? My wife's going to Carl Cox um, down the road uh, and I can't go um, soon. So there you go. Um, so um, if any of you DJs uh, want broadband on your mobile rig, try looking at BT Mobile Mini Hub, says Tim. So a bit random, but thank you for that, Tim, if you're in the UK, of course. Um, so um, Mix and Dell says, next year I'm wanting to DJ around my local area, especially at house parties. How would you promote yourself as I'm only in sixth form? I started DJing when I was in sixth form, uh, Mix and Dell. Uh, I DJed by playing the end, of, uh, the end of year and the end of term parties, not only for my school, but for all the other schools. Maybe that's a way of starting. Um, so, all right, lots and lots of, uh, of great comments coming in here, uh, but I can't read them all out, so I wanna move on. We're talking about five ways to accelerate your DJ success in 2019. Uh, we've already had produced content and we've already had meet people, get out there, don't be shy, don't sit behind that computer all the time. Number three, is really, really important. Now, are you gonna to have to bear with me for a minute and a half on this while I explain it? Um, and listen hard because people get this wrong. So number three is practice your pitch. Practice your pitch. And I'm not talking about singing a perfect A note at 440 hertz or anything like that. I'm talking about practicing telling people who you are, what you do, and what you're up to right now. Remember those things, who you are, what you do, and what you're up to right now. Practice telling people those things. You'll be amazed how many people can't do that in this game. You know, I'm Phil Morse, I am a DJ, and I run the biggest online DJ school in the world. Right now, I'm making an awesome DJ course with Laid Back Loop that's coming out later this year. That'll do, won't it? When I was first told about that exercise, I said, uh, my name's Phil, um, I'm a, I run a website, I run a kind of train, you know, like you can teach online now, like since YouTube, I, I run a website, I started a website, because I'm a bit of a marketer, but I'm a writer and a, I'm a DJ as well. I've learned to make videos, so I kind of make these, and, and the, the, the person who made me do what I'm asking you to do now was like, God, Phil, you lost me at website. And he grilled me about what I really did. And he's like, Phil, you're a DJ, you run the biggest DJs. How many people are on your school? And I was like, 20, 22,000, he's like, do you know anyone who's got more than 22,000 students in this game? I was like, actually, now you come to mention it, I don't. He went, okay, you're Phil, you run the biggest DJ school in the world. I said, it's not really a DJ school, it's like an online DJ school. He went, Phil, you lost me online. It's a school, you teach people. Say it after me. I'm Phil and I run the biggest DJ school in the world. It felt so strange. But you know what? The more you practice it, the easier it is. So what is it you do? And say your whole name, by the way, not just Phil. You know, I'm Phil Morse, I, you know, say your full name, say what it is you do. And by the way, if you're a DJ, that's probably far more interesting than anything else you do. So say you're a DJ and then say what you're working on right now. What's exciting you? And if what, if at the end of those, that, that sentence, you're not excited, change your story. Find something that does excite you because if you can't excite yourself about what you're up to, you ain't gonna excite anyone else about it. It's such an easy thing to do, but it takes practice. And so few people practice just saying who they are. You know, it's cheesy, but try, try telling yourself every morning who you are, what you do, and what you're gonna to do today towards a big goal. You'll be amazed how much easier it pops out your mouth when people say, so what do you do? What are you up to at the moment? And you know what? When you can tell people that stuff, they get excited too. And do you know what they go and do? They tell other people. So now the word spreads. Now people start saying to you, oh, I hear you're doing this or that. That's how it works. That's how you create buzz around yourself, by believing your own buzz to start with and practicing telling people about it. You know, as DJs, we tend to be quite shy. I know it sounds crazy, but it's true, isn't it? 
I, I first got into DJing because I was too scared to go out. That's the absolute truth. If I knew that if I was behind the decks, I was separated from everyone else. So I could be in the same room as them. I mean, that's how bad my anxiety was about going out when I was younger. That's why I got into it. The confidence thing is not built into any of us. We've got to learn it. So learning to just tell people with your head held high and your shoulders back without shame, who you are, what you do and what you're up to now is such a huge thing. So look, get good at it, practice it, believe your own story, get excited by your own story. It's really, really going to help you to progress and to succeed. You know, you don't get people like Luke saying, oh, you know, I just dabble in music a bit. Uh, but I'll tell you what, he's not been saying that ever since the beginning. It's not like he's only just started to accept that he's a DJ. Of course not. You've got to believe your own hype. Um, so um, uh, the word gets around, says, uh, says Delmar, it's true. Um, so what, what steps would you need to take to go from local club bar DJing to Vegas touring DJ, says Alex. Well, well done for getting to local club bar DJing level, Alex. Production, producing music is your stepping stone uh, for sure. Uh, so lots and lots of you um, commenting uh, just generally about stuff, but I'm trying to pick comments that are, that are relevant to this and I'll come back to all your other comments and questions towards the end. Um, so um, let's move on. If you have just joined us, we're talking about the five big things that can accelerate your DJ success in 2019. Or five big things, not the five. These are five things that, that inspired me when I was looking around, uh, looking around at everyone I met last week when I was hanging out with Laidback Luke in Amsterdam. Uh, we had an absolutely great time making a course that we're currently working on, which is why I was there. But it inspired me uh, to quickly bash these out and uh, I thought, I know what, I've missed out on Tuesday Tips Live last week. Joey did it for me, thank you, Joey. But I will do it um, next to when, I, when I'm back, which is today. So that's what we're looking at. So number four, and again, those of you who are fans of, of Luke will know that he's, he's just consummate at this. Number four, treat each and every one of your fans like they're the only person in the world. Believe me when I tell you, your fan base starts right here. It starts with everyone who's in your phone uh, and it works out from there. One of the big things people do wrong when they're trying to become successful is they think, I'm going to do something that appeals to everyone, everyone loves. Uh, forget the people I know, they're not cool, they're not gonna get me anywhere. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna appeal to the masses. I'm gonna get a mix that a thousand people listen to. I'm gonna build my Facebook up with people I've never, I don't know. Um, and I'm gonna get scale and I'm gonna get loads of people into me. And if, I, if only I could get an agent or if only I could get a, book, a gig in this club or if only I could get a track on Beatport, then it will all happen. Doesn't happen like that, folks. Your fan base starts on your phone. It starts here, right in the middle. It starts with the person who you go to work with every day. It starts, starts with the people who live in your house. It starts with the people you went to school with. And you work out from there. And how do you do it? You do it by remembering that every penny makes a pound, that every ripple makes um, a tidal wave, that every tiny little thing you do towards building a fan base builds that fan base from the inside out. So that means you answer every single comment. Even if you only get one comment a week, you answer them, you ask questions, you make those people feel really special on your Mixcloud, on your Facebook, on your Instagram. That means that you try and get conversations going with these people and try and learn about them and try and learn about what they're up to and try and retweet and follow and like the stuff that they're doing. And not just because you want fame for yourself, but because it's the right thing to do. And that way, people will realize that you actually care. You care about what you do, you're passionate about what you do, and you realize that without them, you're never gonna be anything. So it's symbiotic and it is so important to do. And again, I'm just gonna bring, as an example, Laidback Luke. You'll never find someone who cares about his fans more than that man. We were working with him solidly for a week and when he wasn't actually working, all he was doing was answering fans and making sure that the people who were reaching out to him were getting attention from the guy. Uh, and it's, it's something that too few people do and people overlook and people think, oh, I, no, I wanna, I'm bored of my world and the people I know and the stuff. I'm gonna go and find fame and fortune somewhere else. As I say, it doesn't work like that. It works out from the middle. So it doesn't matter whether you've got one follower or 10 or 10,000, treat everyone like you, like you wanna be treated. You know, at Digital DJ Tips, we, we're a team of nine. We've got two people working full-time in social community and customer support. And all they're doing is making sure that everyone gets answered and then passing up to Steve and Joey and myself and the other content creators, anything at all that we could probably help with better than them. And, and I'm sure you, I hope you, you know as a, as a member of our community that that's how we are and that's how it works. If you do, then we've done our job right. But we know that if we don't look after our community, we're toast. 
So, you know, it's, it's a really important thing if you want any kind of success. Look after your fans. Treat them as if they're the most important person in the world in every interaction. So if you just joined us, we're talking about five ways to accelerate your DJing career in 2019. We've already done create content. We've already done meet other people. We've already done uh, per perfect your pitch, practice and perfect your pitch, who you are, what you do, what you're up to, and treat each and every fan like they're the only person in the world. Um, so the final one, which is a bit of a cheeky one, but this is what people always ask us. People always say, oh, Phil, I can't get anyone to listen to my mixes. I can't get anyone to follow me on Instagram. My Facebook's stagnant. No one watches my YouTube videos, blah, 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 blah. So the final one is stop fretting about your socials because there's two big things here. One, people say, I don't know what to post on my socials. It's not surprising no one follows me. If you followed numbers one to four above, if you are creating great content, if you're meeting interesting people, if you are uh, promote, uh, practicing telling the world what it is you're doing and who you are, and if you're treating every fan like they're the only fan in the world, those four areas are what you post on social. You're creating great stuff. So you've got stuff to talk about that you've made at all times. It's fine to talk about your gigs and what you're making and stuff. You're an artist, that's okay. Uh, number two, you're meeting other interesting people online and offline. They're doing interesting stuff as well. So you're telling the world about what they're up to as well. You've got interesting stuff to share. You're naturally hooked into people who are doing awesome stuff. So you can pass around stuff that's of interest to your audience from other people you know. Number three, you've practiced your pitch. So when you do great stuff, you know how to talk about it. You've always got, this week I've been up to this and I've been up to that and so on. So you've always got something exciting to, to brighten up the days of people who are maybe having a boring day and are loving reading about what you're up to. Number four, you've always got fans. You've always got people who are sharing stuff with you that they find interesting, who are telling you about their life and resharing, liking, um, be, giving thumbs up to, um, uh, spreading stuff that other people are up to who are nobodies, who are, who, are, who are just your fans and who would just love to see you pay them a bit of attention in public is an awesome, awesome way to create content on social and people always love it. I mean, what's better than getting a like or a follow from someone that you admire, right? So do that. Uh, and if you're doing those four things, guess what? You're never going to be short of stuff to, to tweet about, to put on your Instagram, to make a little YouTube video about or a vlog about or to put on your Facebook. Uh, but the second thing is that numbers lie. You know, if you've got 150,000 fans because you've done whatever to get 150,000 people to follow something you do, but if you send out an email saying, guess what, I've released a track today and no one responds to it, they're not fans and they're not worth having. If you've got 500 people on your list, but when you send the same email out and half of them immediately go and buy that track, you're 250 times better off than the person with the big list. Numbers are not important, it's quality that's important. And you get quality by doing great stuff, by meeting great people, by having a great way of telling people what you're up to and by looking after those people when they come and hang around with you. At that point, those people you've got, whether it's 10, 100 or 1,000, they are the people who are your true fans, who are responsive to you and who are going to help you push it to the next level. And the great thing is that once you get to that number, all they've got to do is tell one more person and suddenly 1,000 become 2,000. And as long as you're doing all the things we just talked about, it does happen. There's no guarantee it's going to happen, but it's not going to happen if you don't do this stuff. So... That's our five tips for accelerating your DJ career. I said they weren't gonna be hacks. I do apologize to people who expected them to be hacks, but guess what? These are the things that work. So if you are surreptitiously watching this in your lunch hour, you can go now. Uh, but if you are um, ready to hang around, I wanna just read out some of your comments, some of your suggestions and stuff, uh, and uh, give you a shout out uh, as we like to do, as we've just talked about. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do now. Um, I'm gonna jump in here, I'm gonna go right back to the beginning actually, uh, and just give a shout out to everyone uh, and read out from the top all the interesting things that hopefully uh, we haven't had time to share. Uh, since uh, since we started this broadcast, uh, and also I'd just like to remind you that uh, if you uh, if you've seen this, uh, the Global DJ Network, and you wonder what it is, it's our private group for DJs, for DJs by DJs. You can join this by going to our Facebook page, clicking message, 
and type in the word join. Uh, this is where we broadcast this stuff. Hello, if you're on there, you are VR, you're our VIPs. At some point in the future, this is the only place you're going to be able to see these broadcasts. Uh, and the other one I was telling you about was the Complete DJ course. This is our big course for DJing. It's currently unavailable. We finished our private launch to our members. It's done very, very well. So if you're one of the many hundreds of people who've joined us in the new course, welcome. But if you're not and you'd like to get on board this, just make sure you're on the list. We'll let you know when it goes public uh, in a few weeks' time. Uh, okay, so um, back to... Back to you, this is what it's all about. So hello to uh, Jai Waz, who says, thank you for your videos. Hi to Stephen in Australia and Joe. Hi to Vicente. Hi to Nonfader MX. Uh, hi to Eric, who says, hi, Phil, and everyone else. Yes, hello to everyone else. There's a team of nine of us here. So hi to the team who are watching and answering your comments and generally uh, being involved. Hi to Danny. Um, hi to um, Chris, who says, good morning from Vegas. Uh, hi to DJ Wolf. Uh, hi to Ben, one of the team. Uh, to DJ Freezy in South Africa, uh, hi to Deep Blue. Um, so, um, right, let's get into some of your random questions then, and I'll just try and give a few more before I have to run home and cook dinner for the hungry family. I'm the cook, you know, I'm the cook. The way it worked was when I met my wife, uh, I was DJing Friday and Saturday night and earning enough money to live the rest of the week, and she was working really hard in a nine to five. Uh, and so I just used to cook food. And now, 20 years further on, I'm still the cook in our house. So I've got three hungry mouths sat at home, luckily it's only five minutes away, all waiting for me to go home and cook their chili con carne, I think, tonight. So guys, I'll be home soon. I want to deal with lots of interesting comments first. Um, so Jason says, I've got a DJ Wego 4 and I'm having problems with buzzing noise in the speakers. Uh, I use an iRig too. I've tried everything to stop the buzzing, but it won't stop. Yeah, this is quite common, Jason. You could just try plugging it into a different socket. Have you tried with or without the, um, the mains plugged in? Uh, but yeah, this is, uh, this is an issue that sometimes happens. I've got a similar thing, actually. I've got a little audio interface, which I can probably show you. I put it away today, but it's probably in one of these top drawers down here. Uh, where's my little audio interface? Yeah, got one of these. This is called a, in fact, you probably can't see it on that camera. Let me put it on this camera. This is called a Griffin, uh, a Griffin iRig, I think, iMic. This is used to, actually, that's out of focus and I can't change that. But anyway, this little thing I'm showing you here, this is used to plug, um, plug your stuff into your laptop to record. Uh, and it works fine with the laptop with no mains power in. As soon as I plug the power in, it goes all dodgy. So there is a problem with um, plugging audio interfaces, especially little ones, into devices. So I would also ask iRig, maybe they can help you there. Uh, so hi to Andres in Santiago in Chile. Uh, hi to Clyde in South Africa. Charlie, uh, hi to um, hi to NA, who's in Dubrovnik in Croatia. Good to have you here. Um, so uh, hello to Tim and to Collis in Manhattan. Uh, hi to Tony, who says, Dubset. Dubset was what I was telling you about, to get your mixes legally, legally on SoundCloud, on Spotify and on Apple Music, Dubset, D-U-B-S-E-T. Uh, so OBS, is it any good, says Mike. We don't use OBS here, but Joey does in the Manila studio. It's a broadcasting software. I'm broadcasting to you now on broadcasting software. We use something called Ecamm Live. It's just really simple to use. We used Wirecast before. It was rubbish, really rubbish. Um, so um, so um, what if your mix is not good, says Mystic. Well, practice, you know, practice. Now, Laidback Luke had a really good practice. Um, I'll tell you about it. Laidback Luke says he used to promise, he used to have the 5-2 practice system. So if he had two gigs at the weekend, he'd practice five times in the week. And every day in the week, he would record a mix at night, and in the morning, he would listen to that mix, make notes about what was good and what was bad, and that night, he'd record the mix again. The next day, he'd listen to it, make notes about what was good and what was bad. And by the weekend, he played the two gigs. Even the two gigs might not have been perfect, but they were a lot better for the five practice sessions. Beginning of the next week, he'd do the whole lot again. So practice, you know, that's the way to get better. Um, so um, Keith says, I'd like to get some music. Uh, is there a record pool in the UK for music we don't get in the States? Good question. UK centric record pool. And the answer to that is I don't know. Uh, if anyone's got any ideas of UK record pools that are UK specific, please share it in the comments on YouTube for Keith. Uh, so hello to uh, Chris and Blake and, and Herstina um, and to Helda and to um, Tim. Uh, hello to Mix and Dell. I think we said hello to you earlier. Let me scroll down quite quickly here. 
Uh, are you going to be at DJ Expo, says Marcus, which is in Atlantic City? I think so, Marcus, this year. I think I'll be there this year. Um, so, um, so, so many comments. It's awesome, but I just don't want to bore you, but at the same time, miss anyone out. So, uh, it's true what you say. My wife is my biggest supporter and then my friends. It's already spreading out from there, says Mark. That's about um, treating each and every one of your fans like they're the only fan in the world and that all your first fans are probably already in your phone. Um, so Keith says a shout out to Scott at Digital DJ Tips. I was talking about customer service and Scott is in customer service. I'm assuming that's uh, where that's from. EJ says, I do you have uh, any uh, tips for DJ drops? Uh, Music Radio Creative, website called Music Radio Creative in the UK. Try them. Um, uh, so um, Ken says, worry about those who are positive influences, not negative energy. I think that's a really good uh, point there, Ken. You know, you can choose who your friends are. You can't choose your family, but you can choose your friends. Uh, Kimon says, I'm getting likes and follows from big name DJs, all because I post off a nice pic on Instagram. So it goes to show quality over quantity. Um, so DJ Andrea says, Phil, thank you for your video. And I'd like to thank you for all your emails. You're a promoter and I admire you. I wish you all uh, the luck in the world. Um, and you really do a lot for younger and older DJs. So that's good. Thank you for that, DJ Andre. It matters to us. Um, so love saves the day. I've got to get back to work, uh, says Seraphine in the Bronx. Uh, so Ken, Ken says, focus on those who, no, sorry, Kimon says, focus on those who, you, who like you and you'll find wonderful friends who will support you. Uh, Pablo says, hi from New York. Um, Floyd says, I was wondering, with all the sales of DJ controllers, which ones actually get used on main festival stages if the standards are Pioneer CDJs with record box? To be honest with you, on main festival stages, it's always Pioneer CDJs. A little bit of the time nowadays, it's Denon gear. Uh, the Denon controllers are these ones here, which are, you know, they're pretty much like the Pioneer controllers, right? But they are the Denon take on it. But... Um, but uh, the reason is that they're just standard. You know you, know, you know you can turn up and you know the gear's gonna be there and it's gonna do what you want it to do. But look, if you learn to DJ properly, you can use anything. You can learn on a controller and then you can move onto the festival stage, no trouble. That is what this course is about, the complete DJ course. It teaches you to DJ properly so you can DJ on everything. So this isn't another plug for the course, but just to let you know, that's one of the, the big things about the course. Uh, is that it, it's the idea is to teach you the skills of DJing so you can then play on CDJs, even records, but also controllers. So if you're not on our list, join the list, we can let you know about this. It's currently uh, not available, but it will be soon. Anyway, um, I totally agree. Short, sharp, without too much detail. Otherwise, you give it all away or they lose interest, said Party Anthems. Unlike this broadcast, by the way, but we know these broadcasts go on. We know these are special. Um, so um, people are asking about dubstep, what does it do? And Eddie's been kind to explain it. It clears the music that you use uh, through the label so you don't have to, thus it's legal, not a bootleg. Um, more people asking about record pools. So if you're a YouTube uh, watcher, um, please pitch in. Alex says, is there a record pool for goth, goth rock, EBM and trad goth? And again, I don't know, so I'd love someone to help. Um, Delmar says, will you be at ADE 2019, Phil? I hope I, hope I will actually, Delmar. Looking forward to uh, being there. Um, is it bad? I'm still on the first Pioneer We Go and I've been DJing for four years and still not moved on and done gigs, says Kojo. No, it's not bad, but uh, it's not about the gear, Kojo. It's about setting goals for yourself and reaching them. Uh, so don't worry about the gear. Worry about uh, where you want to go in all of this. Um, so um, Robbie says, you missed my comments, Phil. I'm really sorry, Robbie. We will, we will answer them afterwards. And if anyone's watching the replay uh, on this channel, YouTube, Facebook, uh, the Global DJ Network. If anyone's watching the replay and you still want to ask a question, please do ask underneath because Scott, Lauren, Ben, Faye, Steve, Mark, Joey and myself, uh, even Juanmi sometimes has been known to jump into the comments from the team here at Digital DJ Tips and help out and answer. So you can ask questions at any point on these videos and we will get to you. I feel like I've talked for a long, long time today. And again, apologies for people who are used to short stuff, for people who just want to go bang, bang, bang. Uh, but these are shows. I do want to try and take this time every week to interact with everyone, which is why I have my trusty iPad with all your comments on. I really enjoyed it today. Let us know what you think about these five tips underneath. But meanwhile, this is Phil here at Digital DJ Tips with today's controller, the Denon MC4000, saying get good, get out there and make the moments. And I will see you again next week for another Tuesday Tips Live. Till then.